everybody, welcome to the show. Today we'll be talking with Brad Fay, Director of Content for Southern Oregon Public Television, an affiliate of the Public Broadcasting Service. Welcome to the show, Brad. Thanks, Andy, good to be back. Great, today, today I'd like for us to talk a little bit about the state of public broadcasting services today. Uh, there's a lot of speculation on where it's going in the future, whether it's going to continue to be funded, and the services that it provides to the community. And since you are director of content, you can probably answer some questions for us about what our local services are providing to us, and then we'll talk a little bit about a, a broader picture of public broadcasting. Sounds good. Um, you know, I wish I could answer more questions. It's a little up in the air now with the uh, current administration. Um, some in the current administration would like to zero out the federal funding for public broadcasting. Now, of course, we're funded with corporate funding and local funding, local corporate funding, and also our membership base that's here in Southern Oregon. Uh, so we have, you know, it's about a third, a third, a third. But if we lose that one third of the uh, federal funding, mm -hmm. then Frankly, we're going to be scrambling a bit to figure out how to keep our head above water. Um, that being said, we do enjoy a lot of bipartisan support and have over the years. And this won't be the first time that they've tried to eliminate the federal funding for public broadcasting. And uh, every time they've tried in the past, it's been uh, uh, voted down to eliminate it. And in fact, <coughs> they've kept our budget pretty flat now for almost a decade. So, uh, you know, that's what we're hoping is just to continue with uh, basically what the funding is now. And I guess we're going to see because President Trump is going to submit his budget as we speak here in late May uh, pretty soon. Uh, and we'll see if uh, Congress and so forth passes it when if they do. Uh, it'll be October 1st when we know what the numbers are. Okay, so just in case some of our viewers don't understand all the places that PBS touches. Can you tell us about some of the shows that you put on and some of the organizations that use that programming? Well, sure. Um, you know, one of our hallmarks is the fact that we're very diverse. Um, in addition to some of the primetime programming that you see on Southern Oregon Public Television, like Antiques Roadshow or Nature or Masterpiece Theater. We also uh, have a whole menu of local programs. Uh, including Immense Possibilities and our recent Our Town project where we featured Gold Hill. And um, we also do a student showcase. And we also have a series called Local Focus where we look at uh, documentaries and then we put a local spin on it. So there's the local programs. And then one of the things that uh, a lot of people don't associate with public television, but it certainly is true, is our kids programming. It's on from 6 to 6 every day. And uh, so there's 12 hours of children's programming every weekday, and, and even some on Sundays and Saturdays. And uh, <coughs> it uh, uh, spans the age groups all the way up into teenage. And it's used uh, to some degree uh, in the schools, but it's also very curriculum-based, very well thought out. A lot of people don't realize it, but to be on public television with a kid's show goes through years of scrutiny to make sure that it's actually academic and it has some learning value as opposed to our competition on some of the other commercial networks. It's entertaining but not necessarily academically accurate. Uh, and I might also add that most of our kids programs are all based on kids books whether it's Cat in the Hat or Peg and Cat or Clifford the Big Red Dog um, which are well-established authors which are favorites among kids, and so it enjoys a huge viewership among children. And again, it has that, uh, because it's based on a book, it sort of, uh, by definition, has a curriculum to it. So it's a learning learning tool. Okay, so the, the basic difference is gonna be that uh, PBS has a lot of scrutiny before they can show those, and instead of entertainment, it's actually there to educate the children. Yeah, and I might add that that's true for the adult mm -hmm. programming, too, to some mm -hmm. degree. Now, that's not to say we don't have an occasional entertainment programming from the British in the form of Masterpiece Theater mm -hmm. or Midsummer Murders. Uh, but even then, we, we feel like we're bringing a different culture. We don't just show local, uh, national um, <coughs> drama programs from the United States. We try to find drama programs that will sort of set, shed a light on, for example, British history. 
Um, but the Antiques Roadshow we consider an, uh, an educational show because it has a lot of history to it. American Masters is a biographical show. So yeah, we, we try to have the educational component in addition to the entertainment component in pretty much all of our programming. Okay, I know there are three stations in our area for SOP TV. Can you tell us a little bit about Th those? That's correct, and I'm glad you brought that mm -hmm. up because a lot of our audience doesn't realize that either. Mm -hmm. We have our main channel that's been here for years, but over the last decade, we've rolled out the Create channel, which is a do-it-yourself channel. It has cooking, travel, how-tos, woodworking, painting, those kinds of things, 24-7. And then we also have our second, our, actually our third channel, it's called the World Channel, where you can see all kinds of public affairs programming. It does not do entertainment programming, and <coughs> does not do music programming. For the most part, it does public affairs programming, and it has a lot of repeats from our main channel. So mm -hmm. for example, you know, you can see Washington Week on uh, the World Channel or wherever, but you can get uh, good up-to-date uh, public affairs programming that's very timely. Okay, so your create channel kind of helps people if they have do-it-yourself projects around the house or something like that. Instead of hitting YouTube, they can actually go in, watch a project being done by a group of people and walk through that project. Right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. And, and a lot of the, you know, what you'd expect out of a traditional cooking show. Mm -hmm. And our travel shows are very unique too. So, so yeah, the create channel, I've had viewers say, that's all I watch is the create mm -hmm. channel. Um, and then I've had a lot of viewers say, I didn't even know this existed until I found it. And it's a little hard to find on the cable because it's in the upper numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy to find if you're over the air because 8.1, 8.2, and 8.3 are right together. But uh, if you're, and if you're on a satellite, you don't get those extra two. I should add that to be uh, full disclosure. The satellite systems have not picked up our two additional channels. But that being said, it's all over the cable systems and it's all over the air if you want to watch them. Okay, do you have off the top of your head the call sign for your station? Because I know it doesn't show up as SOP TV. There's a, another call sign. Yeah, well, going back in time, and, and when the FCC assigned call signs to stations, mm -hmm. our station is KSYS. Okay. And we have another transmitter in Klamath Falls. It's called KFTS. So that might be how it shows up. Mm -hmm. It often shows up as SOP TV, mm -hmm. and it also often shows up as PBS or PBS, uh, PBS, PBS World, and PBS Create. And I, I, I know where you're going with this because it can be quite confusing. Right. Uh, and we right certainly here. wish that we could be identified as one channel, but for various reasons, including history here, uh, we're known by various things, and it does get confusing. I know there's been a lot of emphasis on education and how it's being done and the changes that are happening there. Uh, does public broadcasting and especially uh, SOP TV used in the schools or is there plans for schools to uh, be able to access your program? Well, that's, I'm glad you brought that up too because <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize that, that there's actually, I just mentioned three channels. Mm -hmm. Well. There's a fourth division of, of PBS that a lot of people don't know about, and it's called PBS Learning Media. And it's not a channel per se, but what it is is it's a subdivision of PBS that goes out and provides material for schools. And it can be stuff that you see on our air, full programs, and they ask the schools, is this good to run as, let's say, fourth grade history or something? Mm -hmm. They can, PBS Learning Media also breaks a show up into maybe three parts, so it's easier to use in the classroom. So they might take a, a, a show on whales mm -hmm. and, or Alaska or whatever it might be, and they divide it into three parts, and they, sh they, they teach it in the schools for three days. Well, <clears throat> this PBS Learning Media division has been around for quite a while, and they did a survey to find out which television markets, including ours, use it or don't use it. And sorry to say, our market is one of the least used in the whole United States. And there are many markets that use it all the time. Their whole school systems use PBS mm -hmm. day in and day out to teach kids various things. So we got a grant mm -hmm. to hire a teacher ambassador who is going to go into the school starting this year 
and try to get the PBS learning media that I spoke of mm -hmm. into the schools so that we have a better track record of using public television in the schools. But yeah, they choose, you know, not, it's not all the programming you see on PBS. It's not mm -hmm. even maybe the how-tos that you mm -hmm. see on Create. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, does this uh, Nova or Nature uh, have academic worth and does mm -hmm. it does it uh, attack certain educational priorities in let's say it's fifth grade geography I'm just throwing mm -hmm. that out there mm -hmm. or fourth grade uh, history mm -hmm. or whatever it might be I think fourth grade is state history mm -hmm. so <coughs> so at any rate we're trying to make great strides and hope to in the next couple of years with our PBS learning media okay I know that we're kind of talking K through 12 there, and I know that once you're into the higher level of education, there's a lot of research that has to be done. And it seems to me like the, the unbiased look is that look that you get, the broader look from uh, public broadcasting for that type of research. Are you thinking about even touching that market? Do, you mean, do we plan on, on, on going into colleges and so forth? Right. Well. Certainly our material is available to any mm -hmm. professor that wants to use it in the classroom. In fact, there's special rights conferred on shows that allow any of our shows to be seen in the classroom up to or more than a year. So <clears throat> that's sort of up to the professor. That being said, yeah, a lot of our shows go through a lot of research and that's one of the things we're very proud of because they're so well researched. Some of these shows take years to research and develop whether it's um, a documentary in nat on, on nature or a NOVA, for example, just takes years to find out you know, some of the stuff that, that NOVA has done on NASA and moonshots mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, which is excellent material for college classrooms. But it does take a lot of research. And even the stuff that we do with documentaries, like on Frontline, where you know, I just saw Frontline uh, last week on the problems of poverty in America, which would be a good show to see in any kind of social studies class mm -hmm. or you know something like that but I happen to know that they put over two years of research into that show okay and there's a national world research going on also local history and stuff that can be uh, watched on on our local public broadcasting right that's correct we've produced some local history ourselves we've mm -hmm. done uh, <clears throat> a story on the White City when it was an airfield. We've done, uh, it's called Air Minded City. We've done a, a show on a, a wo World War II hero named Johnny Hampshire. Mm -hmm. We've done uh, history on the Rogue River. We've done history on, um, <coughs> let's see, I'm blanking out here a little bit. Oh, on the logging m museums in our area. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we uh, try to do local history as well as what I mentioned earlier, which mm -hmm. is a lot of the national history. Okay, I know that we're working with uh, the school here to produce this, and a lot of these producers have aspirations, and there have been some producers with you that have gone national. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, yeah. Um, we First of all, we work closely with Southern Oregon University, mm -hmm. where we're shooting this right now, mm -hmm. and a lot of the people, including the director that's directing this show, have been you know, part of the Southern Oregon Public Television production mm -hmm. team, and we welcome that kind of interchange and, and training opportunity and, and that kind of thing. Um, some of the shows that we've, we haven't really had a lot of producers that have gone on to national fame, mm -hmm. but what we have done is taken some pr producers that are from the Northwest or from Northern California and given, and they produce the show, and not necessarily even at our station, but because we have entree to the bigger, broader public broadcasting mm -hmm. system, we get those shows on nationally, and I can name a few of those. Uh, Music Gone yeah. Public mm -hmm. is one that uh, is out of Chico, California. Um, <coughs> we are uh, in the midst of uh, a show about uh, the Brit Festival and their recent um, endeavor up at Crater Lake. They did a concert up at Crater Lake. And I can't say too much more about that, but uh, mm -hmm. that's coming your way. But that hopefully will go national. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we uh, we try to springboard, if you will, 
some of our local shows into, into national. And I might add, another show that shot right here in this studio is Immense Possibilities okay. with Jeff Golden. Uh -huh. That started out local. Uh -huh. The next thing we know, it went regional. We had five or six stations throughout uh, Northern California and Washington and, and Oregon. And uh, I might add, Alaska picked it up too. Okay. So that was the regional rollout. So that was another year. And now we just went national with it. I'm proud to say that we're going to be seen in Denver, New York, Los Angeles, Puerto Rico. Okay. And so Jeff Golden, who's sort of a local favorite here for local programming, is now going to be seen throughout the public broadcasting system. Okay. Um, I'm going to play the devil's advocate sure. a little bit here. Um, since there is such a big concern about funding for public broadcasting services, what can we uh, think about or how should we be thinking when it comes to losing that one third? How can, what's going to happen? Is that going to affect our schools? Is it going to affect what we see on TV? Is it going to affect our local community? All of the above. Um, I mean, anytime you take yeah. a cut in funding by a third, if the federal government cuts, it's got to be made up someplace or we're going to have to cut, and that's usually a cut in quality. And so, so for example, I mentioned the Teacher Ambassador Program. Mm -hmm. We do have a grant, but it's only for two years, and we're hoping that that'll be a springboard to continue it for year after year. Mm -hmm. Because many of the markets in, that I mentioned have this learning capacity, and they've had it for decades. Mm -hmm. And so we hope to be one of those that eventually has it for decades. But yeah, I mean, we do so many local productions with the few funds we have, and if, if our federal grant is cut, I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing we can do that many more. Okay, I know that uh, we're pretty veteran-centric, so I'm going to touch on the veteran part Please of this. Do. And I know that you do uh, our stories of service, things of that nature. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the veteran aspect with their families of the things that you're producing? Sure. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't mention it in our earlier uh, roster of, of local programs. Mm -hmm. But we have embarked on a two-year project, and it might even stretch into a third year here, where we're dedicating a certain amount of local production to veterans. Mm -hmm. including our series, My Stories of Service, where we interview veterans from Vietnam, from World War I, uh, II, um, Korea, and Afghanistan, and uh, Iraq, and have them simply tell us their story. And some of these are very harrowing, uh, compassionate stories. And we've had that on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it's running right now, and it'll run all the way through uh, pretty much the rest of the summer. We also have done some local focuses around veterans documentaries. So we ran a documentary about suicide. So we mm -hmm. had a local focus. We ran a documentary about lo uh, veteran homelessness. So we ran a local focus about that. We ran a documentary uh, dealing with the families of veterans. And mm -hmm. so we ran, a uh, we ran a documentary about that. But we had a local focus where we actually talked to the local people Mm -hmm. about these issues because these issues are not just in somebody else's backyard. These are things that we, we, we deal with here locally. And I think we, we, we touched a lot of people. In fact, I looked at the ratings of a couple of those shows and they really were well watched. And I should also add that that's been a real community uh, builder, if you will, because mm -hmm. we've enlisted a vet Veterans Advisory Board. Mm -hmm which comes in and advises us as to what are the problems, what should we be covering, what shouldn't, what don't we have to cover. And we've been working with the Veterans Advisory Board now for almost two years. Okay, that's great. I know as time goes on, uh, the issues change. They so sure do. So you do need to have some input from the community into that, so it's great the community's involved there. Um, how can the community better support public broadcasting. How can that support come now and how can it come barring anything in the future? Um, well, we have some very traditional ways of supporting mm -hmm. public television and the most traditional is to become a member. Mm -hmm. If you pledge a membership, $60, $100, $200 a year and renew that membership every year or go on a sustainer program so that it continues to come into the station every year 
that's one of the best ways because mm -hmm. you're then invested in public television. Mm -hmm. And we listen to our members too. We do a member survey every year. We take your phone calls. If you've got a program suggestion, we can look into it. A guy just called me last week. He heard about a program that uh, he wants me to investigate, which I've been doing, and if I can find it, I'll get it on the air. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So um, it does have its payoff, but it also, we ask your contribution as members. And of course, the other local support that we get is local corporate funding. Mm -hmm. So you've probably seen in between programs that this program is brought to you by, and it may be one of the local auto dealers, it might be mm -hmm. one of the local insurance companies, it might be uh, any number of people have stepped up and uh, support public television. And I might add, some of them have been with us for years. So we have a very dedicated corporate support. But if you're a part of a corporation and you want to support public television, uh, just give the station a call and we can set that up. Okay. Um, there's a lot of rural area here, places where cable doesn't reach. Yep. Are, do you reach those areas? T tell us kind of how you get out into the, the areas where cable's not, where the internet isn't that good, where cell phones aren't working that well. I know that that's where there's an audience out there for you. <clears throat> there sure is, and, and like I mentioned earlier, our main channel can be seen on all the satellite systems. Mm -hmm. Our channels two and three can't. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, the satellite dish will bring in our main channel. We're also well um, penetrated with the cable systems, cable mm -hmm. system mostly, mm -hmm. spectrum, mm -hmm. uh, throughout southern Oregon all three of our channels. But what a lot of people don't know too, that even though we have two transmitters, one in Klamath Falls and one on King Mountain out in Grants Pass that serve over the air, what we also have are over a dozen translators. Okay. One in Cave, Cave Junction, mm -hmm. one out in Brookings, uh, one in Williams, so forth and so on. One the down near, uh, Jack out in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. So. If our transmitter doesn't hit you, these translators' chances are will. Okay. Now, they might be on a different channel mm -hmm. than our channel 8, but you'll find it. And so, uh, and I might add that that translator system is a very expensive infrastructure to support, so that's another reason. If you're watching us out in one of those rural areas, mm -hmm. and we are very rural compared to most public television mm -hmm. markets, um, if you're out there, and if you don't know, if you can't figure it out, give us a call. Okay, we uh, we have stations or areas that we need to reach uh, that are off the grid, kinda. So that's where your internet's gonna come in and help with things like that. In the future, how can the public ensure that we're gonna have have public television that it's gonna stay around and stick with us for a while? Well, like I said earlier, that's a little bit up in the air. We're sort of waiting for, for a federal budget to see if we can at least maintain what we have or at least at the level that we have. But um, I would say the number one thing is to become a member of okay. public television because the more membership base we have, and I should add that's heavily leveraged. Mm -hmm. Said another way is if there's more members, we get more federal funding. Mm -hmm. The federal funding is based on how well we do with the local funding. And that's the part I want to touch on as yeah. far as the federal funding goes. There's got to be something that we can do as individuals to influence that. Well, that's one of the main ways is to just become a local member, mm -hmm. and that way we can, we can leverage that for more federal funding. But the other main thing to do is to talk to your representatives. Okay. And, and um, <coughs> our senators... And most of our representatives in Oregon are on the side of public television. Okay. I can say right. that. But that doesn't mean that the winds won't change if the federal budget gets tighter and tighter. Mm -hmm. You know, we still need to speak up. Our viewers need to speak up to the representatives. Wouldn't hurt for a phone call. Wouldn't hurt for a letter. Even a postcard to the representative. And maybe say, I watch public television 18 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Please don't take this away. Okay. That would really help. We got a, just a couple of minutes mm -hmm. left. Is there something you'd like to say to us before we get off? Well, I would just say, you know, uh, we appreciate the support that we've had w for public television uh, over the years, and uh, we hope that you those of you that have supported us continue to. 
Um, we hope that those of you that uh, haven't made that jump yet, we hope you, you see fit to, to do it. But most of all, uh, watch us. Like I say, we have three channels. If you've had trouble finding uh, our other two channels, I think you'd find something in there for you. And uh, they could uh, just uh, tune in and watch. I'm sure they'd become supporters once they become viewers. Okay, thank you for being with us, Brad. It's always a pleasure, Appreciate Andy. you today, and thank all the students and volunteers that are helping us today. It's a great job. We couldn't do it without you. Thank That's you. That's for sure.